Hey, welcome back to Everything Money. We're glad you joined us again. Mo, I always say that really fast, and I, I, I watch the shows back. I wonder why I say it that fast. It's like Micro Machines back in the late 90s. You weren't alive back then. Sorry about no, that. I but don't know what you're we're talking about. about Foot Locker today. We use our eight-pillar analysis to look at the health of a company. We look at their stock price, what they're making, and we, we want you out there, if you're if you're new to our channel, to start envisioning, much like Warren Buffett says, is you're not buying a ticker symbol of Foot Locker. You're Imagine you're buying the whole company. What questions would you have if you're buying the entire company? We will look at some of the questions you should be asking yourself now using our 8-pillar analysis. I introduce the Egyptian dreamboat that is Mo. Hello. Hello, my dear friend. How are you? Foot Locker is an 8-pillar stock. What does that mean, folks? Well, Tim, our producer here, on my screen, we use our 8-pillar analysis to analyze this company. And this is all all, all checks. Uh, our, our, mm -hmm. our, the, the folks in our Everything Money community love uh, eight pillar stocks and this is one of them so in essence we're going to go over the numbers and then determine what should we be paying for this stock i'm confused a bit mo by Foot Locker. you know um everything is moving to online at least last year we were mm -hmm. and i told you before we started recording there's nothing more um demoralizing than ordering a pair of shoes getting excited then trying them on in your house yeah and when they don't fit, now you got to figure out how to take these things back. Yep. So you and I, I think, and Paul as well, we love still going to you know, Dick Sporting Goods. We love going to that, that in-store experience. And Foot Locker has been rocking that. With the, they have. Do they still wear the referee? I, they do. They do. <laughs> the I think that's still their, let's see. Yeah. So, yeah, that's still their logo right here. Yeah. The, so in essence, all over the country at many, many malls, there are still fights breaking out over shoe Jordan. releases and Jordans. And so well, all that goes into the idea of like, what is the, uh, the status of Foot Locker? and is it a buy or a void we will tell you right now mo what is the market cap of this awesome company so the market cap of they they are 5.79 billion so they're a good company good company 5.8 bill 5.8 bill pillar number two oh i'm sorry pillar number one we want we, we used to look at just the pe but now we're looking at the average five-year pe and we want this less than 22 and a half what yep. is it they're well under wow, 22 and a half, 11.06. And that is the market cap divided by the average, la the last five year of average earnings. Yeah, look at that. The, the PE last year was 5.6. That's that's really, really great. I can see why this is a pillar stock yep. already. Uh, a profit margin of 11%. I think for retail, that actually sounds pretty high. It, it does seem pretty high. Um, hey, I mean, when you think about shoes, when I think about shoes, at least I think about Foot Locker. So they must be doing something right because they they're doing very well. I guess you're right. I, 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 my kids love Foot Locker. Yeah. So okay, pillar number two, we want our five-year return on invested capital, the ROIC. We want this greater than 9%. What is it, Mo? And it is. It's 11.9%. So call it 12%. They are investing their capital back in their business very well and generating so very, very good returns off that. So far, so good. We'll go to the income statement next and look at pillar number three, which is our revenue growth over the past five years. We obviously want this to be going up. Yep. Revenue growth over the past five years, 7.7, 7.89, 7.98, 7 7.41 a little bit down, but they are up and it's 8.72 now. So that's a check. Um, and and I'm, I actually thought this number was going to be a little bit higher. I was expecting maybe a COVID thing, COVID boom, just from people not and go back to school and everything. Yeah. But I, that's not the case. So that's pretty good. And they've been growing all the way back since 2012. This is yeah. looking awesome. Yeah, How about, I mean, if you look back to 2012, it's just been consistent growth. Amazing. How about uh, net income? Pillar number four is an income growth over the past five years as well. Income growth over the past five years, five point, uh, 556 million to 1.02 billion. Now, if you look in here, it's been a little bit erratic. A little they choppy, were, yeah. A little bit choppy i mean they they were 577 306 520 194 and then this big jump up to 1.02 billion so maybe there's a reason for that maybe it's covid you got to look into that pillar number five is our share do you see how i stroke my beard like a wizard mo I sometimes do. when i really that beard think is just it's something that i could never deal with is too itchy and i don't think i can grow it but you you look great in a beard i mean i'm um, trying <laughs> beard oil definitely helps could you have a full one like me i don't think so I just How go, long would that take to grow? You just go full terrorist mode if you I had would. a beard. I would be. Well, I have some really good jokes right now, but I won't say them. <laughs> <laughs> Is it considered offensive if I'm Egyptian and I say terrorist jokes? I mean, I'm sure we're huge <laughs> with the Taliban. They must love us. I See? Mean, the fact that you're hosting the show now and exactly let's where are we going with this i don't know <laughs> shares outstanding folks we want this number going down low if, if they're diluting our shares i'm gonna be upset what are they doing no they're not i mean even if you go back to 2012 it just has come down every single year from 17 131 to 103 and a half now 
And th that's great. They are really buying back shares at a very rapid rate. We do so many videos, folks, where the company is just complete dog poop. And this, all these, all these pillars are making me smile. Foot yeah. Locker. And, it, and what this means is that they are buying back shares. So they are giving you more ownership in the company. So that one share that you own, now you're having, you own more of the company versus diluting you. They are increasing their stock price for you by diluting shares. But that's not benefiting you as a shareholder. If you're interested in looking at more of these numbers and all of your investments, you can join the Everything Money community. Go to everythingmoney.com. Formerly Patreon Mo. In the past nine months, we've built one of the best Patreon pages in the entire world, and we're jumping off Patreon. You can sign up at everythingmoney.com to avoid Patreon's double fees, Patreon software screwiness. All of the malarkey is gone by joining everythingmoney.com. You can get this software. You can join our community of like minded investors who are talking about such companies as this yeah. eight pillar stock. And in the bid nas mate, bid in the bid nas nation, let's read that real quick. Ready. And in the Bid Nast Nation, you can join Mo on a daily basis and do those swing trades, those momentum trades, those long-term trades, all of this at everythingmoney.com. You can join today. Mo, let's get back to Foot Locker. How about pillar number six, which is total long-term liabilities? What do they owe? They divided owe. by their five-year free cash flow. We want this number under five. Mo. Exactly. So the total long-term liabilities is $2.56 billion right now. Let's jump over to the cash flow and see what their average is, Seth. $2.56 bill. Correct. And the average five year is 662.2 million. 662 million? Yep. And that sounds pretty good. Yeah, from that's obviously within yeah, five for sure. Exactly. And we're looking for that to be under five. And it, they're in that range. They are just, they, this company is doing very well. Now, pillar number seven, the granddaddy of them all, is free cash flow growth. We want their free cash going up. If they have free cash, they can pay a dividend, they can make acquisitions, they can buy back shares, but they got to have that cheddar to do so. Mo, do they have it? Exactly right. And even, I mean, over the last five years, they've crushed it. I mean, they have had, here we are, they have had 569 and now they're at 1.42 billion. Now, there's a couple of years in there where mm -hmm. they, they spiked up, came right back down, and then last year was 68 million. What was the reason for that? Uh -huh. Did, there, there has to be something in there that would, I mean, there's some kind of anomaly going on in there, but they came right back up to 1.42 they more than compensated for that fall in there. But that's something that we would want to find out what was the, the reason exactly, not just run with it and say, great job, Foot Locker. Pillar number eight is we'll take that five-year free cash flow average, which is 662. We multiply that times 20, which is a standard number to get our desired market cap. 662 times 20, Mo, is it's 13 billion? What the heck? Makes sense. Does because, it? And, I mean, they're, I mean we, we're hitting all eight pillars right now. And to me, I know this. I, I, own, I own shares of them right now. And I know that their market cap is, I mean, I think they're a very undervalued play. Wow. So, yeah. folks, sorry, I'm shocked because this doesn't happen yeah. often yep. if you've been following along. I got a market cap, a desired market cap of 13 bill. The actual market cap is 5.7 bill. That's drastically less. Mm -hmm. So, interessante, yeah. Mo. And here is the eight pillars. I mean, you see you have all checks right there. Now, just because you have eight, eight checks doesn't mean that you should just go and buy this stock. Understand things. I went back and I understood why. My biggest thing going before I bought this was, and I bought this during the pandemic. I was like, what is going to happen with malls? Is shopping going to change? What we're seeing with looking at Amazon and stuff, people, I mean, their numbers are coming down because people are going back to malls. People are going back to stores. They have a great online presence, so that didn't concern me. And the fact that people are going back to malls, I'm very happy with it. I, I think that they're an undervalued company right now. I think they're going to do very well going into the I future. I think with the, in the, with the information sharing the internet that didn't exist when I was yep. young, uh, I think young people moving forward, like the shoe community is just a whole different world. I it was is. down in Vegas, yeah. and they have the shoes. They're wrapped in plastic, and yeah. they're, they're four, five, six hundred $600. My kids are interested in stuff. Well, you weren't... Tim and I in the late 80s, uh, I looked like a complete dweeb, yeah. doofus with the clothes my parents put on me. And now my kids, they know what Gucci is. They, they, they mm -hmm. see people on TikTok. They see people on YouTube. They know what fashion is. And I just think this shoe industry is just, just amazing. Yeah. My, so My brother is a big shoe person. Paul's a big shoe person. Yeah, you're right. And my man, they just buy nonstop shoes and they're always from Foot Locker. So what we'll do is... We're going to head over to our stock analyzer tool. You also get this tool as a part of our Everything Money community if you sign up at everythingmoney.com. And this stock analyzer tool helps you make assumptions for the future and then helps you determine what you should be paying for the stock today if you want 
a desired return. And Mo, walk us through some of the steps you're putting in here for making some future assumptions over the next seven years. Yeah, so here's a seven-year analysis. Now, this first year of revenue, <clears throat> one year of revenue growth, 18%, that, that's an anomaly. So I went in there and I just put averages of three, four, and 5% on the high side. Share change, they've been doing a very good job. Yes. I took away 2%, 1%, and then I put zero just in case they stop buying back shares. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think that they're going to do that because they were still buying back through a pandemic. Profit margin, I went just based kind of on their 5 and 10 year, 4, yep. 5, and 6%, see if they can continue that. Revenue grows, that is a percentage of free cash flow, same thing. And then PE. <clears throat> With PE, I went 15, 18, and 20. 20 high side. This is a company that they definitely have growth potential, but even, I don't want to put them at 25, 30. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then my desired returns, I would like to see 12, 11, and 10%. Let's see what the numbers spit out at us. Yeah, the current price is 56 bucks. Go ahead. And we're sitting well, right look there. At this, so. so it ranges from, <clears throat> excuse me, $51 to about a little over 100 bucks. And that's kind of where I saw them last year. That's kind of where I see them now. I know it, this is a good company. We get chastised in, um, by some folks for not doing our due diligence. And, and Mo, I've gotten some guidance from some of our competition out there. They say you should be reading the 10K and listening to conference calls as your first two steps to look into a stock. Yeah. Folks, if you're out there reading 10Ks all day, you're going to go blue in the face. Our first step is, are they making money? Right. Uh, what is their PE? And you can learn all of this using our software and just look at the eight pillars. We do this for uh, when we do videos for just Patreon, we look straight to eight pillars. So in essence, you can look at the eight pillars very quickly and then decide if you want to look further, which might be the case for Foot Locker. I think part of doing due diligence is not doing due diligence. I mean, why would I, like we, we did Kraft Heinz earlier. What would be the point of me looking into Kraft Heinz? Why would I look at that? What is, what is reading a 100 to 200 page 10K and spending two hours on that mean anything for me? If With they this, don't make any money. Exactly. This, I already know I'm not going to buy that. There's yeah. nothing in there that's going to change my mind. With this... Yeah, I'm going to go and look and see what their plan is going forward, and that's what that's what I'm going to spend an hour on. Are they future. opening new stores? Exactly. How are their sales? What are the their same, same stores? Store sales? Of course. Very important. If folks are in the BidNast Nation with Mo, that trading community where you get updated by Mo on a daily basis, are people trading Foot Locker and Mo? I can see right now it's an interesting stock. So right now it's interesting, but look at this run that it's had from back in um, 2020 through. I mean, it's just been an incredible wow. rise as as we've seen from their values. I mean, it makes sense of why this company is doing this, but right now they're struggling a little bit. Um, we talk about gaps. Here was a gap that they just had a, a big gap up on earnings. That, uh, so the next earnings is 1119. They probably had earnings in August. Um, that gap almost filled. I do think that this gap will eventually fill because they always do. And then we'll get some kind of trajectory up. And as you can see, Seth- We need a sweet spot reversal, baby. Yeah, we did, well, we reversed over in the overbought area. And it started to move down. So this is a good a good trend that it's going down. And it's still moving down. So that's why, why I kind of see that it's going to probably fill that gap. But after that, I do project that. I mean, I think that this thing is going to get to maybe the bottom here. And this, this is going to spike right back up. And we're going to see another great run. And this is one of those companies where when the world falls apart, you could see this one moving up on you. Because people are going to go, people go to value when the world falls apart. Yeah. Contrary to popular belief. This is one of those companies that you can find doing that. And if you look back in the past, Mo, look, go back. I mean, if you would have caught chart. this. Yeah, go go back when you would have caught this. Look back there. So actually, I did buy it right in right in here somewhere. This is where I was buying because I noticed it was coming up here and I bought it somewhere in here and we've caught this whole run. Now, I'm doing this from a value play, but to enter stocks, I often do look at charts of where resistance and support is. And that's when I got into this thing. So it's been a great run. Yeah, an amazing, interesting company. It's rare that we actually analyze an eight pillar company since everything is, is very overpriced yep, at the exactly. moment. But when things start settling down, folks will be flocking to our channel, I assure you, and we'll be letting you know what we're buying then as well. Interesting company. Take a look at 10K if you want to do uh, some more due diligence. Yeah, I love eight pillar companies. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny as I now walk into these companies, <laughs> Knowing that I'm either invested them through my little book stocks, yep, yep. it's just it's just a fun so fun aspect. It's of great. Life. Yeah. It's great to so. understand businesses, and it's great it's great to look at a company as an actual company yeah. and not just a ticker symbol. Yeah, that's interesting. Go to everythingmoney.com, sign up, join our community. Make sure you fondle the thumbs up on the way out, like you're tickling Paul's belly. Rest in pepperoni, Paul. We love you. We miss you. Uh, you gone. You dead to us. Um, see you guys. He's not dead. He's alive. <laughs> I love you. See you guys.